my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here's your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil Markets. Paris Rapeseed. Since mid-June until October, the market had been trapped between two congestion bands, one below between 4.38 to 4.45 and three quarters, and another one above between 5.13 and three quarters to 5.19 and a half. During this incarceration, the market constructed a head and shoulders pattern, which still looks a lot like a head and shoulders top right now, as well as an extension to its second shoulder from mid-August until the start of October. I've highlighted a neckline for this head and shoulders top in dark blue on my daily chart, currently it's at 4.53 and a half. The problem of the, mar the market suffered during this time had been the sheer amount of force necessary to push down through this head and shoulders top neckline and try and fulfill targets below. What I mean by this is that we not only have the neckline to try and push down through, but nearby below was the previously mentioned congestion band between 438 to 445 and three quarters, containing the March, April and June 2013 highs of 442 and three quarter, uh, 442 and a quarter, 442 even and 438 even respectively. It looked as if prices had finally managed to break lower in early October, but the market turned back up and into the congestion and then fell away again rolled up and fell away such that right now prices are sitting within the 440 438 to 445 and three quarter band once again this not only moved the market away from a break lower into a possible false break lower territory but also created a possible small reverse head and shoulders pattern over october and early november with the neckline based on the same neckline of the larger June to October head and shoulders top. So far, unsuccessfully, a head and shoulders top pattern. In the meantime, there are some key bearish pressures that prices have to deal with, ones which I detailed last week, and I quote, we have overhead a more diaphanous congestion band between 456 and three quarters to 468 and three quarters, a band that was relatively easier to navigate than the others mentioned, but which now has three key potential bearish pressures within it. They are the declining short medium moving average currently at 449 even. Then the flatlining medium moving average currently 460 even. And the declining long moving average currently at 462 and a half. At least two out of these three are descending to impact the market and one should not take away from anything from them. Not take away anything from them, especially any efforts to pressure the market from above. End of quote. Whilst the market is deciding whether to try these overhead resistances or not, I will in the meantime repeat some potential targets below, which I laid out three weeks ago for the head and shoulders pattern. Hence, the primary target X would be in the 400 even zone, with a secondary harder to reach target in the 354 zone. Any such move lower would be very, very interesting as we have alternate neckline one currently at 401 and a quarter and alternate neckline two currently 404 and a half, both back from the old November 2019 to November 2020 head and shoulders top in the way. They are highlighted in bright red and green respectively. Plus there is the December 2020 low at 396 and three quarters all of which are in the way and I would note that these three supports stopped the fall of this market back in May this year. The key patterns here have been the July to late September double top which we've seen play out in both primary and secondary targets. Then below that the neckline, specifically the neckline of the earlier mid-April to early July reverse head and shoulders bottom which is highlighted in purple on my daily chart currently at 697.10 which even this week has been influencing the market. And finally, what I consider to be the most important pattern here, bar perhaps the neckline, and that is the bearish Andrews picture created by the earlier double top of the mid-July to late August move, which is highlighted in bright red on my daily chart. On this last pattern, the market has broken up and out on the top side of this pitchfork, but has failed this week to push up through the green colored short medium moving average currently at 728.40 a significant failure at this stage this failure led to prices pushing back down below 
previous resistances that turned into supports are now back as resistances. And these are the old July 2008 high at 71080 and the congestion between 723.70 to 729.40 that contains the recent 50% Fibonacci line at 729.40. Looking below, well, most of the support below is recent with congestion in the 701.5 zone, then just above the 680 zone and the October low at 672. There is one final point and it is a messy one that I highlighted last week. Three weeks ago, we had a dead cross a lagging bearish indicator of the declining short medium moving average currently 728.40 down through the declining long moving average currently at 748 even this is already a bearish indicator even if a lagging one however we additionally could look at the moving average ac moving average action from three and two weeks ago as being a possible bow tie formation even a possible bearish bow tie formation formed of the flatlining medium moving average, currently 757 even, and also the declining long moving average and declining short medium moving average, currently at 738.30 on the latter. Now, before you start, before you even mention the word, I know, I know there's a lot wrong with this bow tie. For example, well, the moving averages are in the wrong order, and one of them has been heading higher, though it has leveled out, it may eventually start to decline. However, the early indication of such a pattern would be bearish, Plus, the theory behind this indicates that between 15 to 20 sessions after the crossover, we may see a significant move start. Thus, I would extend the window a little to account for the messy nature of this one. So between approximately the 17th to the 27th of November, we may see a significant move, may see a significant move. I will put no more effort into this one right now, for it is, as I've already said, a messy one. Though with the move up and fall this week, when we are within the window of opportunity, well, that seems also to be significant. Bursa Malaysia crude palm oil. The mid-August, early November 2022. That's right, the August, November 2022. A year old, a year old mildly bearish shift pitch, or the one highlighted in dark green on my daily chart, is still running the show here after being, as I say, a year old. This mildly bearish pitchfork guided prices uh, more or less lower. Initially in between the upper time currently at 40.45 and the middle time currently at 34.13. Then for a while in May and June between the middle time and the lower time currently at 27.81 before prices moved back up again towards the upper time. The significant recent patterns in this larger bearish pitchfork have been the June to September diamond pattern highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart and even the more recent late July to late August bearish shift picture highlighted in bright green on my daily chart. The market at the end of last week tested and closed over for a first time the combination of the upper time here currently at uh, 36.85, the declining short medium moving average currently at 37.18, the July to date downtrend currently at 3700 which is highlighted in bright red on my daily chart plus messing and closing over the recent 50% Fibonacci line at 37.06. Now to add context to this, I've done this, it has done this testing for most of October and the start of November, but last Friday was significant as it was a trigger for the pent up energy that we saw a move up, a gapping move up on Monday through both the medium moving average currently at 37.86 and the long moving average currently at 38.04. Then on Tuesday, prices punched up and verified the new purple colored neckline of the early September to mid November reverse head and shoulders bottom pattern, currently at 38.59, gapping higher for Thursday's opening over the old February 2011 high at 39.53, and finally halting at some old congestion at 39.86. Though I suspect the nearby presence overhead, the big upper time of the original mid August to early November 2022 bearish pitchfork. May have had more to do with it. Now going back for a moment to the diamond pattern type from July to early September, when we saw prices punch down and out of this diamond pattern type. The primary target for this pattern on the downside, and that was in the 30, 35.79 zone, with a hard to reach secondary target X1 down in the 33.75 zone. The primary target was achieved mid-October, but the harder to reach secondary target X1 is still out there and still open and seemingly unobtainable. Thus, I will be retiring target X1 after this commentary. 
So that leaves us still with the early to early September to mid November reverse head and shoulders bottom. And the potentials this may have, despite its very recent growth being seemingly stunted. Thus, the primary target X is up in the 4084 area, and the secondary harder to reach target X2 is up in the 4177 area. Both of these are well beyond the upper big tine of the original big mid August to early November bearish pitchfork. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.